Hello YouTube, it's me again, your friendly neighborhood Green Party rep for Humber St. Barb Bay Vert. If that's still even valid. Um, it's been about two weeks since my last video. It's been a busy time for me. I got a new job with the Greater Cornerbrook Board of Trade, which is exciting. Uh, I'm organizing a golf tournament this summer for um, the, raising money for the Canadian Red Cross. So, good karma right there. Um, I've been writing my book pretty fiendishly, my seventh novel, Interdiction. Um, I'm writing chapter 20, uh, probably on Sunday. Um, and that'll be good too. I'm on page 270 or 260 so far. Uh, and it's coming along rather nicely. The characters are developing fluently, and I'm rather enjoying the uh, satisfaction, the progress of the story. Um, I'm still burned out, I'm still tired, so I can't really enjoy it as much as I'd like. I have to appreciate the story vicariously through my critique partners and my editors and things. Um, but that isn't why I'm making the video. In uh, the effort to distract myself, the effort to keep myself from getting too burned out and too tired, I've been picking with the eco-village a little bit more, toying with new ideas, new strategies, and that sort of thing. Um, so to that end, I had decided that the direction I would take for the eco-village would not be one where we try to balance uh, farm animals with slaughter and butcher shops and meat diets and try to decide how much feed to buy and how much land to leave for us. Instead, I'm opting to go with a completely vegan diet, though not, not necessarily a completely vegan diet, but a completely vegan farm. One where we don't use animals at all. No fertilizer, no milk, no animals to help us. The end. Uh, a, good karma. B, it'll be good for the fortitude. I can imagine people de-stumping entire areas will be exhausting. But, uh, it'll remind us of how things used to be, I guess. More pagany that way. So, I've been studying uh, the principles of organic vegan farming. And I figured out a method that might work to our favor. It'll be tricky trying to get the actual food groups and decide which ones will grow in our Zone 5, Zone 6 area. But that remains to be seen. Uh, so in a nutshell, we'll break up the property into seven chunks, seven regions. Uh, break up the farm component of the property into seven regions. There will be the sound barrier in the front, and the sound barrier in the back of the property, the mile-long property. Um, there will be a township where we'll have five, six, seven, eight houses, a couple of workshop shed type things. The community will be there. And then the rest of the farm will follow that. According to a, a really informative article, where are we? On veganorganic.net, um, I watched a really good video on Lane Tallhurst. He's a um, English, British, English um, organic farmer who's been doing it for 30 years. And it was a really informative video. I rather enjoyed it. And what he taught me was that using these seven different stages, a seven-year crop rotation, you can produce really solid results. He only had 17 acres. And according to his results, he said that he provided uh, 400 families with 75% of their dietary requirements as seen from vegetables over the course of the harvest season. Don't know if you can really pull that off on 17 acres, but that's okay. I don't care if he is in England. Um, so, even if I pull off enough to feed my 30 people, phenomenal, that's all I'm really expecting especially since he uses farm equipment, and I won't. Um, so, without further ado, every um, seven years, each plot on the farm will go fallow. Just cover it over with grass and let it do its thing. Uh, cover it with mulch and let it grow. And then it'll have the full 12 or probably 18 months having a winter rotation to just be on its own and let it rest, recover moisture and whatever. Um, we'll 
trim that down, probably with manual push mowers, the rotary blades and the wheels on the sides, in order for it to mulch a little better. Um, and that will be the first stage. Stage two, and the second block of land, will be legumes, or however the hell it's pronounced. Like alfalfa, clover, peas, beans, lentils, lupins, mesquite, carob, soy, peanuts, and so on. And whatever of those in the same family of legumes that we can grow in that plot, but only legumes, and only for one season, one year. Uh, and between seasons, we're going to cover it over with clover, alfalfa, and grasses, and just that, and not harvest it. That's the fallow period. So in that case, that becomes a fallow, and everything else shifts up one. The third season, the third block, will be solanum, which is potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, etc. Um, and each of these different um, crops has to be in this particular order as described by Liam because they require different levels of nutrients, different types of nutrients, different types of um, predators and that sort of thing. And I can really use what he taught really, really effectively. So I think this is working pretty well. The fourth stage is the brassica family. Kale, collard greens, cauliflower, broccoli, broccoli flower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, mustard, spinach, turnip, rutabaga, and that sort of thing. Uh, tube type plants. Um, number five is the allium family. Uh, garlic, leeks, carat, uh, onion, chives, shallots, scallions, and so on. Um, number six is the Apiaceae family, which are Angelica, Anise, Aracacha, Asa, Fluidia, Caraway, Carrots, uh, Celery, Celentella, Asiatica, Treville, Sicily, Coriander, uh, Coriando, sorry, Coriander, and Cilantro, I'll get it eventually, Cumin, Dill, Fennel, Hemlock, Lovage, Queen Anne's Lace, Parsley, Parsnip, Sea Holly, and whatever could possibly be left. Thank you, Wikipedia, by the way. And number seven is the Cucurbetia family and maize in the same area. Cucumbers, squashes, pumpkins, lufas, melons, watermelons, corn, sweet corn, etc. So, as far as I can tell, that's a pretty solid diet if we were to pull off all these things at once, which they would all go off at once, with seven different lots. One fallow and the other six. And then seven becomes one, one becomes two, and so forth. And it just marches on in ascension. And every seven, eight years, the first crop will return to grasses. Um, I'm sure you all understand. So, what I thought of, because of the unique nature of the property, is if we had the entire farm be that it's mile long length, almost mile long. And as we needed more crop space for lot number one, we'd simply dig or out of the forest away from the road. So we'll always walk the same distance to the same lot and it'll always be in the same place, even though the crops in the lot will move and rotate. But that way we only need to clear what we're going to use, and if we are running low on a particular vegetable, we can clear off more trees, dig ten feet farther back or what have you. Anyway nine minutes. So that's uh, the idea so far. The new topic, the new tangent for the farming will be vegan. It's a good idea, but I don't know how easy it'll be, depending on what will grow in our area and what we can have the education to grow ourselves for diet. Um, I'm guessing most of the nuts we'll be having, aside from peanuts and soy, by way of protein, will be in the legume family, so we might be okay for that. Uh, and there are things that require supplements, and, and like vitamin B12 is hard to get, that sort of thing. Um, so, that being said, uh, as you may have all noticed, my hair is growing back rather quickly. I'm getting a lot of comments on that. Um, and uh, I've been kayaking more recently. I went for a four-kilometer uh, row up the Humber River a couple of days ago. If the weather would improve, I might actually get it again in the near future. Uh, either way, that's my rant, that's my update, uh, so hopefully I'll see you again before the next few weeks. Take care.